Bank of America has revised its forecast for a rate cut in the United States. Now, experts predict the first rate cut by the US Fed only in December this year and only by a quarter of a percentage point. It looks like the ECB will now take the lead in the cutting interest rates. Comments of its representatives confirm such prospects. China's trade balance data confirms the country's patchy economic recovery. Hopes that global demand would help China's recovery were dashed by reports on the country's trade balance. The data showed that the world's second largest economy sharply reduced export volumes in March. Overall, after growing by 5.6% last month, exports shrank by more than 13% and ended up at minus 7.5%. At the same time, sales to Russia slumped by 15.7% to the United States, by 15.9%, and to Eurozone countries by 14.9%. China's imports also locked a decrease. Moreover, they also shifted into the negative zone to minus 1.9% in March from a year ago. That's weak domestic demand and the fallout of the economic crisis still negatively affect domestic consumption. Moreover, deflation trends, falling prices, production and demand are coming to the fore. For example, producer prices in China have declined for the 18 months in a row. For comparison, the import price index in the United States grew by 0.4% in March from a month ago. Moreover, the indicator looked gross throughout the first quarter. Export prices in the United States also increased by 0.3% on months although not as impressive as in the period from January to February. Nevertheless, these metrics are in line with the forecast and confirm the strengths of the U.S. economy. Yesterday's strong reports on the labor market and producer prices in the United States have already become the basis for hawkish forecast of the Fed's interest rates. Fed policymakers stated that there is no need to reduce interest rates in the near future and that the regulator may take its time in this regard. This viewpoint was expressed by John Williams from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York. His colleague from Richmond, Thomas Parkin, as well as Susan Collins from Boston. While traders were assessing a new batch of statistics on the U.S. economy, as well as statements from the Fed policymakers, Wall Street slightly lowered its tone, but the S&P 500 and Nasdaq still closed higher. Once again, technology stocks led the way as markets maintained hopes for a decline in the U.S. inflation. The session of a quarterly earnings report has kicked off. And today, the corporate reports of the three largest American banks, J.P. Morgan, Citigroup and Wells Fargo, will be published. On the other hand, hawkish comments from the Fed speakers gave impetus to the U.S. currency. Besides, the economic data published yesterday and today boosted the greenbacks rally even more. In addition, escalating geopolitical tensions in the Middle East ensure additional demand for the safe haven dollar. In trading on Friday, the US dollar is again in strength against its main competitors in the basket of currencies, and the US dollar index recorded a new high for 2024 above 106 points. The euro-dollar pair had um, its uh, sharpest weekly decline in about four months, and the euro was browsed by the strong US dollar partly due to the expectations that the eurozone regulator may begin cutting rates as early as June. Moreover, Yanis Sternaus, a member of the ECB board, said today that the support uh, uh, deviation from the policy of the Fed Reserve 
ECB President Christine Lagarde was also straightforward on this issue. According to her, the European regulator does not intend to rely on the Federal Reserve when making decisions. We depend on data, not on the Fed, she emphasized. Also noting that inflation in the Eurozone and the United States is of a different nature. No wonder, due to such comments and prospects, the euro continues to trade lower today. During the week, the euro-dollar pair took an also dive. It has already collapsed by 2%. As a result, the price broke through the support level of 1.0700, but movement in one direction cannot be non-stop and rapid. In addition, the local overbought nature of the US dollar will only intensify, and this already creates the risk of a sudden jump, which could come as a complete surprise and even provoke some panic. Indeed, locally, a correction is urgently needed for the euro dollar pair, but it does not in any way cancel the medium term bullish trend of the US dollar. Amid such strong price swings in a short period we can talk about the euro being oversold, but today the bearish trend could push the pair lower to the range of 1.0630 to 1.0730. It's important to take into account that sooner or later traders will take profit from a short positions on the euro-dollar pair. Then, an upward retracement will follow. In theory, we should also now be watching a downward pullback in oil prices. Indeed, the US dollar is storming to new highs, and oil must abundantly repeat under its pressure. But the geopolitical risks pushing oil prices up uh, are of major importance, and the geopolitical influence is so strong that even the broad based advance of the greenback did not lead to any decrease in oil prices. At best, the dollar's rally could only slightly cap the per persistent upward movement. Importantly, the dollar itself is a growing due to the alarming geopolitics. And given that the brand price has already come close to the resistance of a 92, the prospect of its rapid rise to $95 per barrel is becoming more realistic. Moreover, there are no preconditions for calming down geopolitical risks, so there are no arguments for oil prices to go down. You have watched the market review by InstaForex analyst for Friday, April 12. Subscribe to InstaForex TV channel and we keep you updated on all market developments. Feel free to ask any questions and leave your comments. So, see you online next week.